Ed Hill here from the RTC here in Coventry. It's a pleasure to be here to get to speak to you. Uh, I've been really enjoying traveling around our wonderful state and talking to so many people like you here tonight. I built a business here in Connecticut starting with grassroots. When World Wrestling Entertainment first began, the only revenue source there was for the company was in live events. It was selling tickets to those live events, and you went from town to town, and you repeated that circuit here in the Northeast. So you wanted to go into a town and not appear to be a carpetbagger, but actually to do something in the town to make sure that those people remembered you and wanted to have you back. So campaigning, to me, is a lot like building that kind of grassroots organization. So we went into a town, we talked to the local fire department, the local police department, we met with the small businesses, we understood what it was like in the environment, price tickets according to the economy in that town, etc. And we built a business, grassroots, town by town by town, and then we're able to blow it and grow it into a global brand that today uh, is seen in 140 countries and translated in over 35 languages. So I've been really proud of the growth of World Wrestling Entertainment and my time and tenure there as its CEO. I did resign as the CEO to run full-time for this position for the United States Senate because I do believe that this is a time that we need to focus on taking our country back. I've listened to the gubernatorial candidates tonight, uh, U.S. Congress candidates, local candidates, we really are saying the same thing. Government's too big. Spending is out of control. Debt is growing to unfathomable proportions in our country, and that debt is creating downward pressure on our credit markets. That debt is making us beholden to foreign countries like China that owns seven or eight hundred billion dollars of our debt and is now using that debt now as political leverage uh, to tell us what we should or should not do in Taiwan. We don't know how much other leverage those countries that are buying our debt are going to want to have. And we must take control of our country. We must get that debt down. We must stop the spending that we're doing. And there are a lot of programs that we could spend a lot of time talking about tonight, you know, to do that. But clearly our government is just too big. We are talking about the state being the largest employer. Our government has over 2 million employees. That's just incredible to think about that. As a CEO of a company, and the only thing I can relate to is my personal experience of taking a company and growing it from a small uh, company of my husband and I sharing a desk in our basement you know, to taking it now to a global brand. The only thing I can relate to is if my revenues declined and my costs went up, I knew what I had to do. I had to cut costs. I couldn't go out and print any money. Uh, and I couldn't raise taxes. I could increase prices for a while, but only for a while, because ultimately people stop buying your product. And you've heard others here tonight say there has to be a return to common sense in business and government. And that's really where we have to be. And I will take my experience as a business owner of management, leadership, negotiating skills, forcing consensus when needs to be, taking a hard line when you need to. Sometimes you've got to know when to fold them, too, in order to drive consensus and build it. Because we've got gridlock, just like we do in our state government, we do in our federal government. The things that I've heard here tonight, and I hear relative to Hartford, it's the same thing relative to Washington. It's unfortunate that it's a mirror situation of the two. Heavily controlled by Democrats. Budgets out of control. Let's do things go together. Lack of common sense. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the redundancy. <laughs> so the obvious answer is more Republicans equal better government. <laughs> and this coming November, as Mark Fountain was talking about, we really do have to get out the vote. This is a midterm election. What often happens is in a midterm election is people don't show up. They take for granted. We have got to get people out to vote. We need to get a really good turnout for us. This is a year that Republicans can take back 
seats for our federal offices and for our state offices, but only if we work it. And it's not just writing a check and giving it to you know, your local um, affiliate. You've got to go out and work it and talk and make phone calls and drive people to the polls and just stay on top of getting uh, people out to vote. That's just going to be critical for us in November. I really want to serve the people of Connecticut as your next United States Senator. I'm not going to speak to you a long time tonight. Uh, you're, you've been here a long time. You've been very gracious to give us all your attention. Lord knows you're getting my mailers. And you can go on my website and see different proposals and plans that we put out relative uh, to creating jobs, which is what we need to do, which is what I know how to do. After having creating over 500 jobs here in Connecticut, you can pass by Exit 9 on 95 and see WWE headquarters with the, the big flag flying. Uh, because that is um, that's something we know how to do. Been here, created jobs, contributed to the economy in Connecticut, and uh, that's clearly a strength. And I think the next senator from Connecticut is going to need to know how to put people back to work. Because if we don't create that environment for small businesses to flourish, we're not going to have a sustainable economy. economy. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the small businesses create 70% of the jobs in this country, and most of you know that. Tim was just talking about small business and how you build it up, and how you work with your community, and how you build things, and how you donate and give of your time and of your resources. But if we don't allow small businesses to grow, our economy is not going to have a sustained recovery. Because jobs in the private sector is what makes our economy grow. Stimulus money coming in for short-term projects, if you get it anyhow, aren't going to last. If you plug it into your budget for one year, what's going to happen when it's not there the next year? We've built programs in education. I serve on the state board. We've kept teachers on. But what's going to happen next year when that money's not there? So we have to get small businesses stimulated and growing, making the credit markets more available and um, give them tax breaks and tax incentives. Keep money in the pockets of small businesses. Let the government get out of their way. Let the free market, free enterprise system work as it has for so many decades in this country. And it'll be strong again. But government is not the answer. Government does not create jobs. And government, in its current spending flurry, is going to continue to create that upside-down economy. So I would like the privilege of being your next United States Senator, and I would look forward to your vote and to your support. And if you would like to join uh, my campaign, it's Linda2010.com. But I'm going to leave you with one little final thought on this celebration of the fact of all the research that you talked about with President Lincoln. He was a championship wrestler. <laughs> I think it was a small uh, dry goods <coughs> and his boss actually put him into a wrestling match and bet on him, and he won. <laughs> and um, there was uh, you know, one article that said that he fought, fought, and fought against a gun, and he tried to pin him, and tried to pin him, and he couldn't pin him, and he finally threw him down and stomped on his head and no. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a job for you. <laughs> And then someone said, well, what would you think you might have called him? I said, I don't know, honest, eh? <laughs>